My name is Per Malm. I'm the organizer of KiaCon. Thank you for coming today. What, uh, what is like the one must-have out of your booth here, you think? I would actually have to go with probably Heroes Game. Uh, it seems to be a very fun little game. It's pretty easy to play and now, it's modular. Wait, on this one right here, is it? Yeah. Okay, I'm Sally Kinsinger from the Game Room in Washington, Illinois. Washington, Illinois? Yep. Where would that be now? Uh, it's near Peoria, Crest River. Okay, I've been to Peoria. I know where that is now. <laughs> All right. What What's kind of the hot item this year? What you, uh, you saw, I know quite a few of... Uh, I was just curious. I don't know much about this. But, Space Hulk. Uh, Space Hulk. Yeah. Oh, it, just in a nutshell, what is this? Oh, it's a big board game. Why Kiyakon? Wow, okay. Um, geeks are everywhere. There, there, there's more of us all the time. You're looking at one. Oh, awesome. That's fantastic. And I'm probably talking to quite a few, too. <laughs> and a lot of us, we, we, without a con or something, a lot of us have the idea that we're the only one. We, we, we feel like that that's pretty much just it, that us and the people we found on the internet like-minded. But we're trying with KiaCon to sort of have a uh, cultural, um, sort of a, build a cultural community um, of all of the like-minded geeks out there and, and, you know, mostly help us all realize that maybe we're not as weird as we think or as rare as we think. We're having a lot of panels, and now and today is when we're doing most of the costume and gaming. Yesterday was more of the educational panel, okay. letting people introduce themselves. Are you obviously you are dressed? And are you a specific character right now, uh, no. or just something to? to I'm just. I'm just wearing something. Okay, just a, you mean this isn't part of a role-playing game or anything like that, or no. Okay. I'm just asking. I don't know. I'm out of the loop on this stuff, yeah. so. It could be. But... It could be. I don't know. I'm, I'm a dumb guy. I don't know all this stuff. Yeah. So. Lucky number. Hey. All right. I better get rolling. Good luck, Sergeant Major. Thank you, Bob. Zombie dice. Zombie dice. Can I see some zombie absolutely, dice? Absolutely. Absolutely. You hold up the zombie dice. I don't know how well you can see these, but we have a. Uh... A set of ten dice here with different zombie heads and bodies, biohazard sign. On the one side for these, um, great for your zombies board game, or maybe even better, you have the um, critical hit zombie dice with the zombie on the six side, so you know you get that good bite, you know. All right, great, right. Great for last night. Ah. And you can't leave the humans out of the equation. So we have the uh, critical hit weapon dice where the design is on the one, uh, six side. We have a machete, baseball bat, hatchet, chainsaws in here, hunting rifle. I've heard a lot about this next product coming up. I'm just jumping around here. Hope you don't mind. But this, uh, the uh, brain uh, Jello mold, if you will. <laughs> um, it, it's, it makes every holiday a little more special. Yes, I see that. I mean, I've, I've, I've heard a lot of talk about this. They were talking about this outside. Yeah, it comes in recipes. Um, oh, get out of here! You can put like gummy worms in there. Well, you can, this would be like the Christmas version exposed. Oh. This, you can make it look like real gray matter with the. Uh, Using a condensed milk, have recipes for both those. You can do that. You can do that. You can do that. Now, are you on? You're online. I'm online only. Yes. Yeah. Oh, just only. Only online. online. Only first, online. Only now. online. I'm and what's what's your uh, tag again? Online. Kingzombie.com. I'm Barb Heiser, and I've been a paranormal investigator since 1977. And you're originally from the Chicago area. I lived there for many years, um, but had the opportunity to change jobs and and moved to Monmouth, Illinois, where I found that in 1996, I was pretty much the only person in this regional area who was doing science-based investigations of allegations of ghosts and hauntings. So you take more like the ghost hunter's approach to what you're doing then? Similar. There's a, most of the really reputable and experienced ghost hunters use things like electromagnetic field detectors and um, temperature taking devices so that we can find scientific evidence that might support the allegation of a haunting or we identify things that people are mistaken 
um, as being paranormal that actually aren't. One difference with my team, though, is we kind of consider ourselves paranormal social workers. We try to help with the situation. A lot of um, ghost hunting groups will go in, conduct the investigation, and reveal the evidence, and then say, thank you very much, have a nice life with your ghost. We, on the other hand, try to help um, the ghost to cross over to the other side and end the haunting. Now, no one knows for sure what's waiting for us on the other side, but we're pretty sure we're not supposed to just hang around here. Right, right. Are some people disappointed, like they don't get the result they think that you should be getting? Like, they say, oh, my house is really haunted, and you come in and say, I don't. Yeah. Yeah. Do you get that sometimes oh, people yeah. and just like, oh, you're wrong, you're wrong? Easily one-third of the first visits that I do were able to identify um, a natural cause right. for what they think is paranormal. Right. Or I'll be sent photographs that have like dozens of orbs in them, when actually the people have just been taking photos in a dusty attic. Okay. Yeah, so Most of the time there's nothing paranormal going on at all. It's just overactive imaginations or things that they're confusing that are normal, but they think are paranormal. My name is Christine Youngstrom, and I'm here at KiaCon, uh, and I was talking about being an art department coordinator in the art department for the latest Star Trek film, and uh, this afternoon I'll talk about production designing um, a zombie movie called Collapse that was shot locally in Iowa. All right, and uh, I've heard you speak just a little while ago, and you've actually worked on several projects, and the most... The big, oh, I don't know, to me, I mean, the biggest would be the new Trek film, which I've seen five times, I'll be honest with you. And, oh, my gosh. Uh, uh, I just wow. want to congratulate you and your team on an awesome job. Uh, beautiful movie. Wonderful yeah. films. Yeah, well, actually, Scott Chambliss was the production designer, and uh, Keith Cunningham was the supervising art director, and they had a team of 35, and I was sort of a helper to everyone. So, yeah, the, the department, he put together just a fabulous department. There were, of course, a lot of people who were eager to work on that film as well, because it's just because of the nature of the film. Any, any little known facts about the film that people might not know? You say, well, I've got insight on, oh, like... Gosh. Um, you just told us that it, it was not filmed at all in Iowa. There was nothing no, in the Iowa. Iowa scenes were filmed in California. Yeah. Um, gosh, what, were, what would be things that would really amaze you? Uh, the, um, the, when they took off from the Starfleet in the shuttles to go up to the Enterprise was shot in Long Beach in a warehouse there. Um, engine room. Part of it was shot in uh, an Anheuser-Busch um, brewing company uh, facility that was just north of Los Angeles, I think in Pacoima. So, you know, uh, the locations themselves are pretty interesting. Where Scotty gets caught in the pipes, that's actually a brewery then. So yes, part, of, part yes. of it's based and on a brewery. Of that, of course, is uh, a lot brewery. of that particular thing was visual effects. But. Why, why KiaCon? Well, it actually started with the KiaCon Independent Film Festival. Uh, a friend of mine uh, wanted to put on a film festival, so he, pent, he spent thousands of dollars putting on this huge film festival, and uh, the attendance wasn't quite what he expected. So afterwards he goes, you know, it cost me $7,000 to put this on, you know, I could have had a party with my friends at home for a lot cheaper than that, and I figured, well, yeah, I can have a party with my friends a lot cheaper than that. So let's call it a convention and do it. Uh, we're also going to have a Death Star pinata uh, for the younger folks to whack at the Death Star and get a blastering of candy all over the room. When does that happen now? That'll be uh, 2 o'clock, I think. 2 o'clock. All right, very good. Any final thoughts? Uh, no, just uh, we've got a really good convention and. The only thing that could really make it better is if more people knew about it and started coming out to it. This is uh, absolutely as as things have been progressing over this weekend. I've really been impressed with the quality of stuff that we've actually been doing, and I uh, just wish more people were here to enjoy it. So, All right, very so. good. Well, thank you for having us. Appreciate it. Well, thank you for being here. Okay, thanks. Bye bye. Right.